13-year-old Jalen Cisneros is totally blind and developmentally delayed. She can't walk on her own. Where are we going? Room. Living room. Good job. For a meaningful future where she can read, write, and communicate. There's the fan. It's imperative Jalen get the right kind of education guaranteed by state and federal law. Okay, ready to sit. D, A, D, Dad. Mapton officials told her mom, Cindy, that's exactly what was happening at school. Ready? Specialists were providing Braille instruction. Dad. Good. Speech therapy and an organized curriculum. Did you feel deceived? I did. I did because I found out that that wasn't what was going on. E. We found out what was going on. A state qualified instructor wasn't teaching this blind child Braille and the Braille machine was often broken. And instead of lessons in class, the special ed teacher routinely sent Jalen and other disabled students out of the class. Teachers assistants were told to hang out with the kids in the hallway, on wooden benches, and in Jalen's case, in the school's wrestling room with no windows, ventilation, or lesson plans. As long as they could get away with it, they were going to continue to do it. So in your words, they were getting away with it? Yeah. Pushing those kids into hallways and a room with mats and sports gear might still be a secret if it weren't for an employee who revealed the truth. Veronica Vargas, a teaching assistant assigned to Jalen Cisneros. To me, that's an angel in my eyes that's letting me know. King 5 obtained minutes of a meeting between the assistant and the superintendent where Vargas complains of chaos in the special ed program. She said the special ed teacher doesn't teach the most disabled students and doesn't want to be involved in the student's life. Vargas said she didn't know how to teach a blind student. She needed training and resorted to Googling information to try to figure it out. If it wasn't for her communicating those things to me, I, who knows how long it would be going on before I would find out. In the Mapton School District here in the Yakima Valley, we found in the special ed program, deception was rampant. <laughs> Despite laws mandating districts provide a full day of school for all, at Mabton, they bus the most disabled students home early, a full hour early every day for at least a decade. If you bus a child home an hour early every day from first to 12th grade, that robs the student of two entire years of education. A-P-P-L-E. What does that spell? Apple. Good job. In all those years, no one notified the parents that their children had the right to attend school all day, just like everyone else. She's so precious, and I just know how awesome she is, and for them not to give her that chance. Yeah. So now it's like, We've lost all those years. Sorry. <laughs> no one from the Mabton District agreed to speak with King 5, including former special education director Scott Fisher, on the job for 22 years. He was in charge as Mabton's problems mounted. We found Fisher allowed staff to sign documents saying they'd attended meetings about students, but the district later admitted they hadn't been there. Speech therapy was promised on education plans, but legal records show no speech therapist was on staff. And in a complaint against him, Fisher's accused of giving students scores for tests that didn't take place. What do you think of that? I, I was shocked. Dr. Wendy Marlowe is a Seattle neuropsychologist who evaluated a boy from Mabton with special needs. The test scores said that he could read, write, and spell. But that wasn't true. This is small and we're gonna roll it. Experts tell us when the tests aren't right, the child's services aren't either. Cheating the student out of a meaningful education and future. Mm. 10, good job. I have never in my professional career seen someone just List test scores when no testing has been done. Falsification. Yeah, absolute falsification. Hi, Mr. Fisher. I'm Susanna Frame from King TV. 
We've been trying to get a hold of you. After several attempts to reach Scott Fisher, we found him at home in Prosser. What can you tell us about the allegation of falsifying documents when you were special ed director? I can't. I, I can't. Why not? I know nothing about that. Okay, so that didn't happen? I, I was not aware of those accusations. Okay. And remember Veronica Vargas, the teaching assistant who spoke up about what was really happening at school? She was fired. That's right, the aide was fired for insubordination. Instead of addressing the problems, Mabton got rid of the person bringing the problems to light. And how about retaliation in terms of recommending that the paraeducator be terminated? Was that for retaliatory uh, reasons? I, I, I'm, I'm not able to comment on these things. I don't know. Thank you very much. You didn't, that didn't happen under your watch? Uh, th these, were, these were district decisions. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Right. Thank you. ¿Cómo se llama la niña? Jalen Cisneros is headed to high school and has a lot of catching up to do. Her mom says the district has a lot of cleaning up to do so that parents know the truth about their children. Mom, mom, ah. Oh my goodness, so many kisses. The special ed director that you saw me trying to talk to there on his front porch, he now works for another district as a school psychologist, and he's under investigation for the alleged wrongdoing in Mabton after a complaint was filed against him. As for Jalen Cisneros, she's getting proper braille instruction now after a family threatened to take that district to court. And that's why the only reason it's happening. And she's in a new special ed class where she's hopefully able to stay in the class to get the proper instruction. So these poor kids, their families are now left to try to catch up on a lot of lost years. Wow. Are there any consequences for the district? Well, this district has been sued four times in the last year. And for a tiny little district like that, that's a lot. So they're having to hopefully, you know, work out agreements with these families. But in the big picture, no. And I think that's part of the problem. I think that we need to maybe work on getting a better solution like other states do where there's more oversight. Right now, each district kind of runs their own show. And so I think that's something that could change and for the better. And in the big picture, a lack of funding is never an excuse, is it? It's not, although we do have a funding problem here. You're right, the law doesn't say, you know, if you can find the money. It says, do your job, follow the law. All right, nice work, thank you. Sure.